What is going on guys? Hope you're well. Another video, talk with Tyler. It is hot out here in Vegas today. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, so another video. And in this video, I wanted to go over kind of what I'm projecting regarding the stock market, how long I think that some of these stocks are gonna be down, um, and kind of just my overall outlook on you know, how long I think this, uh, you know, quote unquote recession. I mean, I would say, I would say personally that we're already in a recession. I know that's, you know, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion, but if you look, if you look at what's going on right now, especially in growth stocks, you know, it, there's no denying that there's, you know, underlying issues we still have an overly priced housing market we have interest rates that are continue going up we have growth stocks that are completely cut 50 percent and more across their 52 week 52 week highs and really all we have right now is an s p 500 you know the s p 500 is still sitting high the nasdaq's been crushed so i wanted to go in this video and just kind of give my time horizon on how long i think it's going to take for this market to turn around and in what markets are going to be turning around because that's going to be you know that's going to vary too because not every market in this type of environment is going to have the same time frame so i'm going to go over some different examples regarding how long i think growth stocks are going to you know sit where they're at right now i'm going to go over you know the s p 500 the nasdaq um, and the housing market. And I'm kind of going to give some time estimates. And this is just my opinion. I am not saying I have the crystal ball. I don't have the crystal ball that's going to, you know, give you all the answers. But, you know, I've been in this, I've been, you know, into this, you know, community space for a long time. And, um, yeah, I just want to share my opinion anyway. So if you get any value out of this video, guys, hit the thumbs up button helps with the algorithm, helps build the channel. I do appreciate it. Um, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think, how long you're kind of playing, you know, your horizon out for, what your kind of estimate is. So let's just start, let's just start with growth stocks, right? Because growth stocks are um, pretty much what I'm in mainly. I don't own any real estate right now. This place that I'm currently at now, I'm renting. Um, I don't, on any of the S&P 500. I did sell my S&P 500 position the other day. I'll go into another video of why I did that, but I did sell off my S&P 500, so I currently don't have any um, any of that. Everything I own now is just single stocks, which I'll do a video kind of going over what stocks I own and all that stuff, but I don't want to do it in this video. I kind of want to stick to you know the time horizon and what I'm seeing correction wise in the market. So let's just start with growth stocks. Let's start with growth stocks. If you look at growth stocks right now, the NASDAQ's down, you know, 30% plus from year to date. You know, I have a lot of stocks in my portfolio of growth, such as Coinbase, Planet 13, um, Facebook, Teladoc Health, Neo stock, Tesla stock. Um, the list goes on. There's more of them in there as well. Uh, Shopify. Um, and if you look at those right now, those have been cut 50% across the board. So a lot of those stocks are down 80%. Um, but if you look at most stocks in growth right now, they're down 60, 70, 80%. If you look across the board. So what is my opinion on this? Well, if you look at the markets right now, you have to look at what areas are still up. You know, they're still sitting at their highs. And if we look at those, you have to, you know, where what has not moved? And the only, the things right now that's still sitting at their highs are these, the real estate market. Now, I know here in Vegas, there, it's really hot and it started to slow down. Um, we did, there was a drop off in housing prices here in Vegas but real estate prices have yet to you know fall and adjust the way that you know growth stocks have and that's generally how it is usually if you follow the real estate market 
it trails late. So it usually takes a while for the real estate market to catch up to what's going on in the overall economy. It's a slower moving machine. So if you look at right now, you know, interest rates are going up. So right now, if you get a 30 year mortgage, you know, you're looking at about over five and a half percent, six percent for that mortgage. And the Fed is talking about increasing mortgage rates more. So they're looking at doing another 50 point basis height. I think they're going to do that. I think we're going to see interest rates on homes go to seven, maybe eight percent. That's not going to be good for the real estate market. The real estate market right now is still, in my opinion, going to need to soften. So the real estate market's still going to need to soften. Let me put this falling down. My arm's starting to fall asleep. I need to get one of those, one of those uh, holders, but set the phone down. But yeah, so the real estate market still has a lot of room that it can fall, um, depending on what market. Now, I think all the markets are going to be hit overall, but especially markets here like in Vegas, any of the markets is sitting at like the top. So if you go to Google, type in, you know, top 10, top 20 hottest real estate markets, those are going to be the ones that's usually going to fill it first. Then it'll, it'll, it'll probably trickle out, but it's going to depend on, you know, you know, there's so many different businesses within real estate. So you have the construction side, you have the mortgage side, all that stuff's going to soften interest rates. I think the buyer pools already started to, to shrink majorly. We're also, you know, we have, we have the inflation issues going on right now. So people can't afford but so much. And in my opinion, especially millennials, especially younger people have been completely priced out of the market. Anybody that's telling me different, you know, I'd, I'd love to know because if you look at median wages, if you look at average household income wages, and that's, that's you, you, what you, you guys have to understand, that's including, that's including baby boomers, Gen X, millennial, like there's a big age difference. Anybody that works in the corporate world knows that most of the baby boomers and Gen Xs are what have management positions. Millennials aren't out here, unless you're, Unless you started a business young as a millennial, or you just got lucky and just, you know, found yourself into a skill that, you know, was really payable, like computer programming or something like that, you're not affording these houses. And most millennials are already strapped with, you know, student loan debt, you know, car loan debt, credit card debt, and there's just no wiggle room to throw on a massive $400,000 mortgage on top of that with now you're paying interest rates at around six percent so the real estate market right now is going to soften in my opinion and but I, you know there's a lot of people talking about right now that it's going to happen in the summer and i agree i think we're going to start seeing a major soften up in the summer as well especially in you know july august i think we're going to start seeing home sales drop dramatically um, I think we're going to continue seeing a lot of these mortgage businesses go out of business. But if I had to get my time frame on the real estate market, I would say that we're probably going to start seeing the softening here in the summer. It's probably going to get pretty ugly pretty fast. And I would say that we're probably going to see home prices dip. Um, if I had to give an estimate on how much it's probably going to dip, I would say 20 to 30%. It's going to depend on the market that you're in. This is obviously just a guess. Um, and I would say right now, we're probably going to see a, a real estate market, you know, unfold here and go through a quite a bit of drama for probably the next 12 months. And I would say that it's probably going to be a pretty dead market, um, through next year as well. I don't know if we'll see prices. I don't know if we'll see prices come down necessarily next year. We might see the dip happen this year. And then we'll just see the prices kind of sit and just kind of inventory start to build up and be kind of a dead market all through next year. So my guess on the real estate market is we're going to see somewhat of a crash this year. I don't think it's going to be, I don't think it's going to be an OA crash. The regular, the, the, the regulatory has been too tight on how they've been doing lending. It's not like 08. Now I know some mortgage companies are, have started to dip back into subprime mortgages, HELOC mortgages, um, or I shouldn't say a HELOC mortgage, but a home equity line of credit. 
they've started to get more desperate on what they're lending, which could start to cause more issues down the road. But currently right now, most people have fixed interest rates, um, you know, stuff like that. So I don't think we're gonna see a crash, but I do think we're just gonna see a soften where we could see, you know, 15, 20, 25, 30% off of real estate. And I think that could go into next year where the inventory is slow, but I don't think we'll see, you know, a huge price cut much more than that. But I do think it's gonna be about, you know, an 18 month process with real estate. I think it's gonna be a lot slower. Now transitioning that back into growth stocks. Well, growth stocks, if you look at kind of the history of growth stocks, those generally are what is going to feel the pain first. The market is more liquid, right? So when you're looking at stocks, it's more liquid than what you're going to see with um, real estate. Um, real estate is a longer transaction, so you're going to have to have a realtor, you know, you're going to have to find a buyer, go through a mortgage company. There's a lot more aspects to it. Stock market, you can hit a button and it's liquid. So when there's worry, when there's fear, um, when there's issues going on under the underlying economy that maybe Wall Street has a little bit of, you know, is hurt a little bit of before most people, you're going to see the market get liquidated first. And usually, you know, when the market gets liquidated, it's usually companies that aren't producing net profit Hence, you know, revenue companies, growth stocks, um, especially, you know, IPOs, if you're an IPO company over the last two years. Like any company that has any bit of risk, it doesn't matter what your revenue growth is. It doesn't matter what anything about your company is. Generally speaking, over time, growth stocks have always got hit first and usually got hit the worst. And it's usually a trickle down effect. So we've seen a lot of growth stocks down 50% plus immediately. That happened in like two or three months two or three months, guys. So, I mean, I would say we've had a pretty dead stock market for about 12 months, but we saw dramatic price drop-offs here over just the last quarter, just over the last quarter. So, you know, and I think that's gonna have, you know, some, some worse effects. So my opinion with growth stocks, and then I'm gonna transition in, kind of give my input on the S&P 500 and, you know, companies that are safer, like dividend stocks, stuff like that, and what's gonna happen there. So if we look at growth stocks, you know, I think most of the pain has been baked in. Personally, I feel like there was a little bit of fear and it was oversold, which generally that's how it's gonna happen. Usually there's panic and there's overselling. And I think that the market oversold on a lot of these companies, but they're holding off because they know that there's kind of an economic storm that's building up and they don't really know. I mean, even Jamie Dimon, you know, the CEO, uh, one of the biggest bank CEOs came out and said that there was, you know, a lot of like a hurricane wind brewing up in the e economy. When that's happening, guys, companies go risk off. Wall Street goes risk off. Um, and when you see that, a lot of liquidity gets pulled out of the market. Now, with that being said, the liquidity, the money still has to move somewhere. It's still got to move into something. We've seen it move a lot into oil. We've seen it move into a lot of, um, you know, dividend stocks like, you know, Campbell's, Coca-Cola, you know, American Express, a lot of like safe dividend stocks it's went into. Also, with the, the interest rates going up, you know, bond yields have got more attractive. So I know we've started to see some money start to flow back into bonds you know, just because of the interest rate going up and the future potential of interest rates continuing to go up. But that's not gonna last. Um, eventually, Wall Street, eventually the news will change and money's gonna have to move back into innovative companies. They're gonna move back into companies that are growing. Um, but how long does that take? That's kind of the magic question. In my opinion, you know, we could see, we could see more sell-off. There could be more panic. Um, we could see more sell-off into these stocks, even though they're down 70, 80%. We could see a little bit more of a sell-off. I don't think there's gonna be as much pressure on those stocks as the rest of the market, like the S&P or housing, just because they've already dropped off so much. Um, and if you look at the history too, a lot of times you guys gotta remember, growth stocks correct usually a lot sooner than the economy does. So just because the economy crashes, just because if there's like some housing issue or we see a lot of layoffs and go into a recession, does not mean that growth stocks 
are going to emulate what's going on in the overall economy. They don't always flow together. Just like you saw growth stocks fall and housing is still up right now, the same shift could happen where you could start to see growth stocks come back up very fast with a lagging housing market. Just how it goes. It doesn't all move at the same pace. So you guys got to understand that if there's a recession down the road, and I know a lot of people say, well, what if my company goes bankrupt? You know, this is why you have to know the fundamentals of your company. This is why you have to know the balance sheet, how much cash your company has, you know, how the company's ran. All this stuff gets important when these things happen. And you also want to have some, you know, diversification in your portfolio. You want to have more than a couple stocks. You want to have more than just one thing um, because anything can happen. But you want to have the fundamentals of your company. This way you stay out of risk when there, we do go into a recession because I do think we're going to go into some type of recession. So my time frame right now, if we look at growth stocks, in my opinion, they've already been down for 12 months, right? We've already seen a massive sell-off. There's already been a massive amount of pain and growth stocks have already been down for about a year. If I had to put a time frame on it, I think we're probably gonna see growth stocks be very volatile from this point on. Um, and I do think that we're probably gonna have to get over in the next two to four quarters. So the next six to 12 more months, we're probably going to see a lot of volatility in those stocks. Um, and it's probably going to take a few quarters for Wall Street to adjust to the earnings that's going to be coming out and all the bad news going on. But I think we'll start to see growth stocks start to crawl out maybe in the next six months, if not 12 months. That's kind of my just estimate, obviously. I'm not saying that that's going to happen, but that's just kind of my guess. I think it's going to happen before the real estate market. I think the real estate market's going to trail for about a year, um, if not more, past growth stocks. So I don't think the time frames are going to be the same. Um, and I don't think housing is going to fall 80% or nothing like that. But I do think there's going to be a major softening. It's going to be a slower process. And I don't think growth stocks are going to take as long. I think those are going to correct. And I think those are going to correct in a major way before real estate does. Um, and as far as the S&P 500 goes, if we look at those companies, I think the S&P 500 still definitely has some room to fall. I think when layoffs start happening more across the board, I think um, when earnings start to come out weak, I think the next quarter earnings are probably going to come out pretty weak. And I think the market's going to go into panic mode, especially with interest rates going up. You're going to start seeing more money go into bonds. And that's going to cause an effect on the S&P 500. I think interest rates are going to cause more of an effect on the S&P 500 than like growth stocks and stuff like that. So if I had to give a guess, I think the S&P 500 probably has another good 15% that it could fall if not 20%, how long is this gonna take? I think it's gonna be an, an interesting next six months. I think we could start seeing something happen in the next you know, three to six months when these next earnings come out and the guidance, you know, Wall Street sees like, oh my gosh, you know, we have numbers coming in bad right now. With interest rates going up, I think more people are gonna be moving money out of the S&P. And I also think, you know, money's going to be leaving out of the S&P to buy some of these growth stocks that are down so much. Or people are going to go into bonds or they're going to go into cash. Um, but in my guess with the S&P, I would say three to six months. And the S&P 500, I mean, I'm going to expect, I'm going to expect, you know, the S&P 500 to be down, you know, for a good while. I mean, the S&P could lag for about six months after. So I would say these next 12 months, are gonna be very interesting. Um, I don't think growth stocks are gonna feel it as much. I think they've already got the heat for the most part, but I think these next 12 months are gonna be very interesting for the S&P 500, the real estate market, seeing where interest rates go, see how the inflation numbers come out, see how employment numbers come out, um, and just see overall consumer spending. You know, people are running out of money. That's just facts. There's not people with that much leftover money to go do stuff. So, you know, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Hopefully it's not too bad. I don't wish that on anyone. I don't, I don't want to go through a terrible, you know, recession. Um, I know we have, you know, right now Europe has a lot of stuff going on over there, but you know, we'll just have to see, but overall right now, how I'm positioning, obviously you have to know yourself, right? You have to know how much risk you're able to take on. You have to know, your situation, okay? My situation 
is very different from most people's situation. You know, I don't have a mortgage. Um, I don't have children. I'm not married. So, you know, I don't have any really debt. So, I mean, my, um, I'm able to take different risks. You have to know your risk, right? So, right now, I mean, I'm laser focused on growth stocks. Right now, I'm building up my positions in Coinbase. I'm building up positions in Shopify. I'm building up positions in Amazon. Um, I'm building up positions in Teladoc Health. I'm building up positions in Planet 13. I'm building up positions, um, uh, there's a lot of different companies, a lot of different companies that literally goes across the board. Uh, Square, PayPal, um, all these are companies right now that I'm laser focused on. I might even start, I might even add Pelantier. Right now I have about 17 stocks in my portfolio. So 17 stocks across the board, which is a little bit more than usual. I usually like to keep it 15 or less but there's just so many good deals out here right now that I'm just kind of adding and adding and adding. And um, yeah, and a lot of the positions that I have larger positions in that's went down, I'm just trying to bring down my cost basis. I haven't put any money in real estate. You know, maybe a piece of property at some point might make sense if prices go down you know, enough, but you know, it's a little bit hard in my situation to buy a house it'd have to be a very unique situation because buying a house, there's just a lot that goes into it and I'm not really into renting property. You know, it'd have to be a house or something I'd live in. So, and like I said, I think the real estate market's gonna be soft for a while. So right now I'm just laser focused on stocks and you know, just trying to stay afloat as we go through this. But anyways, wanted to uh, share my thoughts and make a video for you guys. I'm trying to keep you guys posted because um, I know there's a lot of fear right now. So I want to make sure I'm trying to help bring a little bit of insight and in whatever I can do. Um, like I said, reach out, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. How are you preparing? What's your, what's your strategy? What's your time frames? Let me know kind of what you're thinking. And uh, yeah, I'll keep, I'll keep making videos for you guys. I'll keep you guys posted on what I'm doing. And um, yeah, if there's any future videos you want me to make, let me know in the comment section as well. I'll be happy to uh, try to make a specific video that would help you guys. But yeah, that's all I got. But anyways, guys, I'll keep you posted. I'll be in touch. Until then, peace, love, out.